Hey guys, it's Mark from Wiki Design, and welcome back to our channel where we talk all things branding, web design, and online marketing. Today's video, we're gonna cover boundaries. What it is that you need to implement for your business to set boundaries between you and your client. So I'm gonna give you a list of our top five boundaries, and I'm also gonna give you some things to do in case a client ever tries to test you on your boundaries. Number one is your office hours. This should be clearly stated on your onboarding process, um, on your website, on your social media accounts, your contract. You need to have your hours blasted all over. Um, this way so the client knows when they can expect a response from you uh, during the business hours that you choose. Number two is your email responses. Um, it should be clearly stated how quick it is that you will respond to a client's email. Uh, on your onboarding process, your contract, wherever it may be. Uh, in our situation, we put down that we'll respond within 48 hours of when you email us. Um, of course, you know, when you go on vacation and stuff, you may want to give the client a heads up, you know, if you're going to be away and stuff like that. But you need to clearly state how quick it is that you can uh, expect a response when a client emails you. Number three is communication. Um, again, this should be stated uh, right out of the gate, uh, how it is that you plan to communicate with your client. Uh, in our situation, we use a project management system where we set up the project and we expect all communication to go through our system on our project management system instead of uh, emails and instant messages and text messages and stuff like that. So you need to set the boundary on how it is that you're gonna communicate with the client. Don't let the client tell you how to communicate uh, during the project. Number four is payments. Uh, this should go without saying you need to document how it is that you want to get paid and when you want to get paid. In our situation, we do 50% of the project up front and when we're done with the project, 50% when we're ready to launch the website or you know we finish the branding. So we have that clearly stated on our website, uh, onboarding process, and especially our contract. So. Um, not only do you need to have that documented when it comes to the time, you need to have it documented how you're going to get paid. Uh, credit card, check, you know, whatever it is. Uh, make sure that's documented as well. And the last one is your timeline and schedule. Uh, just like all the other ones on this list, this should be documented and front and center when the client is first contacting you. So. Uh, right when somebody emails us, we send them our intro packet, which clearly states how long, uh, on average, a website design will take. Uh, where in our situation, it's like four to six weeks. And 90% of the time, all clients kind of fit into this mold. So of course, if you're gonna have a really customized job that's outside of you know your normal type of work, um, then just make sure you document that in your contract, how long um, that specific project will take. So those are the top five boundaries that we recommend you do for your business. Now, I'm gonna give you some tips on what to do if somebody tries to test your boundaries and what you need to be doing. Um, number one is you need to be consistent on all fronts. So if a client is pushing you and trying to test how far they can take you, just make sure that you're always consistent and you follow your processes. Um, so this means don't bend over backwards to you know, get outside your normal process for family and friends and stuff like that. Just be consistent with how it is that you handle your boundaries. And number two is it's okay to just say no. If there's a lot of red flags or your gut's saying no, you know, if, if a client is really pushing your boundaries and you don't feel comfortable, just say no. Because if you're gonna go down that route and try to, you know, bend your boundaries for a client, it's just not gonna end well. You're gonna end up wasting your time, money, you're gonna be stressed, and most of the time, it's just not worth it. Okay, and the last one is professional versus employee. So I'll give you an example. Uh, we went to a WordCamp a few years ago, and there was a speaker that really said something that stuck with us, and we implement this on our business on a normal basis, and that is when you hire us, you're hiring a professional and not an employee. So there's been cases where we've turned away work and projects because the client thinks that they could get us almost as if we were an employee for their business. So you need to set that boundary right out of the gate that when you hire us, you're a professional, not an employee. 
Um, so if your business falls under the opposite, well then make it clear that you know you could be hired on, on like on a contracting basis and almost like an employee. So you need to set that expectation up front and and, and just make it clear to the client that you're hiring us for one thing or the other. Okay, so those were the top five boundaries that we recommend your business implements. And I hope that those extra little tips will help you out too. So again, this is Mark from Wiki Design. Thank you for watching and you know, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And if you like these type of videos, we're kicking out videos uh, every Wednesday. So make sure you subscribe to check out more of our videos. Thanks.